Hi, grade two, it's a beautiful morning. I hope you're all doing well. And I'm gonna continue to read you a bit of wonder still from Via. The Padawan bites the dust. I'm not sure at what point that night Augie had cut off his Padawan braid or why that made me really mad. I always found his obsession with everything Star Wars kind of geeky. And that braid in the back of his hair with the little beads was just awful. But he always had been so proud of it, of how long it took him to grow it, of how he had chosen the beads himself in craft store in Soho. He and Christopher, his best friend, used to play with lightsabers and Star Wars stuff whenever they got together. And they had both started growing their braids at the same time. When August cut his braid off that night without an explanation, without telling me beforehand, which was surprising, or even calling Christopher, I was just so upset, I can't even explain why. I've seen Augie brushing his hair in the bathroom mirror. He meticulously tries to get every hair in place. He tilts his head to look at himself from different angles. And there's some magic perspective inside the mirror that could change the dimensions of his face. Mom knocked on my door after dinner. She looked drained, and I realized that between me and Augie, today had been a tough day for her too. So you want to tell me what's up, she said, softly. Not now, okay, I answered. I was reading. I was tired. Maybe later I'll be up to telling her about Miranda, but not now. I'll check in before you go to bed, she said. And then she came over and kissed me on top of my head. Can Daisy sleep with me tonight? Sure, I'll bring her in later. Don't forget to come back, I said as, I, as she left. I promise. But she didn't come back that night, Dad did. He told me Augie had had a bad first day and Mom was helping him through it. He asked me how my day had gone and I told him fine. He said he didn't believe me for a second. I told him Miranda and Ella were acting like jerks. I didn't mention how I took the subway home all by myself though. He said nothing tests friendship like high school. And then he proceeded to poke fun at the fact that I was reading War and Peace. Not real fun, of course, since I heard him brag to people that he had a 15 year old who's reading Tolstoy. But he liked to rib me about where I was in the book in a war part or a peace part. And if there was anything in there about Napoleon's days as a hip hop dancer, it was still silly stuff. But dad always managed to make everyone laugh. And sometimes that's all you need to feel better. Don't be mad at mom, he said, as he bent down to give me a kiss goodnight. You know how much she worries about Augie. I know, I acknowledged. Want the light on or off? It's getting kind of late, he said, pausing by the light switch at the door. Can you bring Daisy in first? Two seconds later, he came back with Daisy dangling in his arms and he laid her down next to me on the bed. Good night, sweetheart, he said, kissing my forehead. He kissed Daisy on her forehead too. Good night, girly, sweet dreams. An apparition at the door. Once I got up in the middle of the night because I was thirsty and I saw mom standing outside Augie's room. Her hand was on the doorknob her forehead was leaning on the door, which was ajar. She wasn't going in his room or stepping out, just standing right outside the door as if she was listening to the sound of his breathing as he slept. The hallway lights were out. The only thing illuminating her was the blue nightlight in August's bedroom. She looked ghost-like standing there, or maybe I should say angelic. I tried to walk back into my room without disturbing her, but she heard me and walked over to me. Is Augie okay, I said. I knew that sometimes he would wake up choking on his own saliva if he accidentally turned over on his back. Oh, he's fine, she said, wrapping her arms around me. She walked back to my room, pulled the covers over me and kissed me goodnight. She never explained what she was doing outside that door and I never asked. I wonder how many nights she stood outside that door and I wonder if she's ever stood outside my door like that. Hmm, that's interesting. Sometimes I feel that Via is left out because Augie requires so much care 
it's kind of hard for Via. She has to grow up and always be the mature one. And it must be hard. But she's a great sister. Have a good day, you guys. Miss you. Bye.